I say, how y'all doing today? How are you doing? I am your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, the best film writer and director in St. Louis, facts, award-winning, published author, activist, journalist, actor, business owner, Lacey G. Soda Turner. And today we got a special guest today. We got the owner and founder and executive producer of the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, the Hollywood Independent Music Awards, KBH Entertainment Talent Agency. He has spent decades of artist development, artist advocacy, talent booking, concert production, charitable fundraisers, and a wide variety list of other entertainment events. We got the wonderful, talented, amazing Brent Harvey. Welcome to the platform. No, oh, thank you so much. That's uh, yeah, that's a mouthful. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 it's 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 more of a mouthful than uh, your introduction. <laughs> I mean, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> You've done a lot. You've done a lot, man. I appreciate. Yeah, it. I have. Yeah, I have. So I want to uh, you know, get into some of these questions. Let my audience get to know you a little bit. Um, so okay. I started. You began um, your producing career at the age of 15 with the second annual People's Festival in your hometown of Anchorage, Alaska. Uh, can you elaborate on that and tell the people about that? Oh, my God. Um, you know, it, it's it's funny. Uh, a month ago, I crossed the date, which marks 50 years since I've been producing events. And it freaked me out. <laughs> freaked me out. I went, oh, my God. Uh, but yes, uh, at 15 years old, I was crazy, and uh, Woodstock had just happened, and uh, there was uh, the first annual People's Festival that took place, I think, in 1970 or 71, mm -hmm. and the second annual, nobody was doing it. So I said, you know what? I'll do it. I was 15. I didn't know, you know <laughs> what I couldn't do, so um, uh, from uh, from you know, local businesses in the city uh, with donations and everything. I did 12 vans in 12 hours on two flatbed trucks in downtown Anchorage, Alaska. And the very next day, a huge picture on the front page of the Anchorage Daily News uh, made a big deal out of it. And um, uh, I said, well, I, I, I think I might know what I'm going to be doing. <laughs> So um, that was the first thing I, I did. And uh, from there, I started working in a nightclub underage. I was doing uh, light sound and playing records in between band sets. And that was before DJs were a thing. Um, and the band liked what I was doing. And they said, you want to go on the road with us as a roadie? And I said, sure. So at 17 years old, I tour, started touring with the touring band and they found out I could play guitar, sing and play a little trumpet. Uh, they were a horn band. We did all the cover songs, Earth, Wind and Fire and all that stuff throughout. Uh, so we, we toured uh, Canada and Northwestern United States. And whenever we played LA, we played a place called the Red Onion. And at the mm -hmm. time there were only three Red Onions. Uh, and uh, at the Redonda Beach Red Onion, the band broke up and the owner of the uh, nightclub said, you want a job as a D DJ? And I said, okay. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I think I was 20 years old. And, yeah, I thought uh, <laughs> So I started working as a DJ and I stayed with that company for 16 years. It grew to 17 locations and I became entertainment director for that nightclub chain. And I was responsible for hiring and training DJs, hiring live entertainment, writing training manuals, um, training manuals on how to do lighting and, and uh, programming all the music and all the locations, producing uh, you know, pr uh, promotional ads for radio and TV and stuff like that. So I cut my, I, I cut my teeth on the business with that nightclub chain and the nightclub chain closed in 1993. And that's when I said, well, you can either put on a suit and work for another company or you can eat beans for a while and start your own thing. <laughs> well, let me, oh, Red, let me, let me, st let me stop you right there too. Cause I, I had that, that you did the red onion. So what was that experience like? Cause being a disc jockey, that wasn't really, I guess a big thing then. No, when you oh, it was a huge thing. Oh, it was a huge thing. Okay. It was a huge thing. Okay. Um, 
that's 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 before that's even before cds yeah i know um, that's what I'm like. <laughs> yeah, um I know. and we were the bar stars we were we had marquee pictures out in front saying you know tonight oops, sorry about that that's okay Tonight, tonight uh you know tonight's dj is so and so and i have you know these crazy marquee pictures this is probably going to be uh edited in post so i'll i'll, okay. I'll send you some pictures of stuff that you okay. can insert Definitely. but um uh, yeah uh we were the stars of the club and it was a rocking rocking club <laughs> man and you know we went through the disco phase we went through the new wave phase we went through the late 80s rock and roll phase we went through the uh, birth of hip-hop um and started playing you know the message from you know oh yeah oh yeah, oh, yeah. and um you know uh, the run dmc stuff and you know uh in fact i have a i have a platinum I have a platinum record right back there. Jody Watley presented to me by uh, MCA Records. We helped break Jody Watley uh, in our nightclubs. So uh, it, it, it was a big thing. Uh, so how was it, it was like? So much fun. How was it uh, like you were there for the birth of hip hop? How was that yeah. experience? How was that experience for you? We didn't know how to actually handle it at first. I mean, you know, um, with the early hip hop, we programmed it in our sets and we, we, we weren't aware of, the, of where it was going. And then we saw where it was going it, and it did the crossover thing. So, um, you know, like Run DMC, they, they integrated the rock sound of the time in, in, in their music and did uh, rap versions you know, like walk this way, you know, with uh, Aerosmith. And uh -huh. so it, it was really exciting. And, and the crowd just went nuts because it's great dance music. And, um, you know, that, that, that was our thing. And, uh, and, you know, I had to learn how to scratch, you know, <laughs> <You're> um, scratch. <laughs> yeah, you know, li literally the, the, uh, the vinyl, you know, uh -huh. scratch and uh, mix and not miss a beat and uh, mix different genres back to back together, you know, uh, and just be very, very creative. And uh, it, it, it was a whole process that um, that was written out for DJs that were good at what they do, but they needed uh, more direction on on how to handle this new music um, and program the different genres in the same show that they're doing. Uh, anyway, I'll I'll go ahead and shut up okay. about that, that. that. You know, yeah. hey, I'm a hip hop artist myself, so I love hearing about the history of hip hop and people who live through an experience. So I love it. So thank you for that. For real. Oh, no problem. So um, I saw that also, like you said, you was going to either choose the word, assume tile, do your own thing. I saw that you did start KBH Entertainment, um, focusing 1994. on- 1994. Yep. And focusing on consulting, artist management, and event production. And eventually it became the, you know, biggest talent agency now in Los Angeles. So could you tell me what made you start that? And I, I have been booking it? talent in Los Angeles for 30 years. And, 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 and I wasn't an agency. Um, you know, I booked every, I've booked every venue there is and, and the ones that are no longer there, you know, uh, I mean, everything from the sunset strip venues all the way through down to Orange County and up north and corporate events and, you know, with big names and headliners, all that kind of stuff. And then the city, um, Con or, or actually my, my girlfriend who is uh who books carnivals and circuses uh, -huh. uh she booked a carnival in this um los angeles festival and uh the supervisor um of the uh of the event said well now we have a carnival but we don't have any music talent and we don't have a budget and my girlfriend said you should talk to my boyfriend so 
I went down there and I said, I'll tell you what, I will provide entertainment for you because you need entertainment and I'm able to call in the favors. So I booked three days of live music, about 12 acts, and they all, of all the things I've done and that I have in this business, the most valuable thing I have are my relationships. Uh And I was able to call these bands and say, hey, would you come and do a set? Uh, There's no pay, but would you mind? And they said, we're there. (laughs) Every single person said, we're we're there. Brent, we're there, you know? And um, the the regional supervisor said, well, the carnival is so-and-so, but who the hell put this music together? (laughs) So, uh, so word started to spread throughout the, uh, uh, Los Angeles city bureaucracy. And then they contacted me and said, would you submit a request, a uh, request for a proposal, uh, which is a, a bunch of red tape stuff. I mean, I had to provide affidavits that, <laughs> you know, my family never owned slaves, um, <laughs> that, uh, I don't do business with Iran. Um, you know, I do wow. the palm prints and the fingerprints. Yeah, through the I do not know where tank. Osama bin Laden is at. <laughs> I, I mean, I had to jump through hoops <laughs> to do this. And then uh, the, the city said, okay, now you're our, prefer, our preferred talent agent. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, now I book uh, city events. And then COVID hit. So there is no events, right? <laughs> yes. So now I'm in the process of renewing the contract that I had back in 2018. Uh, and I'll be uh, their, um, their talent, their preferred talent agent, um, booking Pershing Square and city festivals and street scenes and all the things that Los Angeles does. So um, yeah, so I became, I became a talent agent to see out of, simply because they needed me to be a talent agency to do the booking for city events. So I became a talent agency back in 2018 and that's still going. Okay. So even though you work with some of the, you know, most A-list superstars, Smokey Robinson, Earth, Wind & Fire, why is it uh, very important for you to work with independent artists? Because some of the biggest stars I've ever seen are the ones you've never heard of. That's why. There is amazing talent out there that all they need is to have a door cracked open. And the ones that have the balls to walk through the door Those are the ones that start to make it. So I'm here to provide a service. I'm here to provide opportunities. Let me put it that way. And it's up to the artists that I provide these opportunities to, to take the ball and run with it. And uh, there's plenty of success stories that I could go on and on about, but I won't, I'll I'll just mention one. Um, This girl, from Modesto, California. She had no following whatsoever in Los Angeles and she wanted to be booked into a show. I'm able to book artists that have no following in smaller shows, right on Sunset Strip, by the way. And she started playing and singing. She just had her keyboard and her. And she finished her first song and I picked myself up off the ground because it blew me blew my socks off what she did and her voice. And I said, I want to introduce you to some people. So I introduced her to some producers that I know. uh, And she got booked for an entire year doing vocal sessions. Um, And then she got on American Idol. She made top 12. Uh, I put her on my uh, uh, Hollywood Music and Media Award stage in 2018 she sang one of the nominated songs which won and that song went on to win the oscar of the golden globe and everything else uh the song was shallow from a star is born so she sang that with casey mcpherson which i've had flown in from uh, nashville 
and it, she blew the roof off. Uh, no, but I've never heard a version of that song better than the one that she did. And I'll provide you with a link um, so so you can share with your uh, audience what I'm talking about. But because of that performance, Diane Warren was in the audience and Diane came up to me and said, Brent, would you mind if this girl sings my demos? And I went, mine? I love that. <laughs> she loved that. So... Anyway, those those are opportunities. Uh, that, that's that's you know that's just one example of an opportunity I try to provide to open doors for artists to walk through, and uh, and I love work because this unseen, unknown talent it's exciting to me. That's why I like working with independent music artists. Yes, I book the big names and the headliners and all that stuff, and they've had all the success and yeah you know i negotiate big contracts and all that stuff but they've already made it it's the ones that haven't made it that i get excited about because i watch them grow and i watch them make it if and if i have anything to do with it it just it just makes my day i'm the way i look at things in my personal life and my business life is i define my success on the success of others nice i like that so brent remember this day right here brent i'm gonna be your next successful story watch <laughs> we're gonna do this <laughs> remember this day but um what do you look for in independent artists when you searching for an independent artists well they gotta be good all right i mean i have to be honest uh <laughs> you know there are a lot of artists out there and the ones that ask me for my honest opinion i ask them many times i say are you sure you want my honest opinion uh, -huh. uh and then if they want it then i give it to them and it's not always what they want to hear <laughs> you know uh -huh. there's going to be some artists that i'm going to tell well you know what you'll be a star at the next bot mitz mitzvah that you play uh -huh. you know um but then there's others that are like, whoa, okay, let's see what this is like live. And I put them in a live show. And if what the record, a great recording, if that translates into a live show, then there's something there. Artists have to understand that just because you have a great recording, if you can't replicate what you record exactly. in a live setting, you ain't got it. You ain't going to, you ain't going to do it. Right. Because that's where the money is made in ticket sales and merchandise sales. It's not in how many streams and views you get. Exactly. You might get 12 cents after six <laughs> months. But if you're a great live performer, then we got some business to talk about. Mm. I like that. See, Brent, Brent dropping them jewels for y'all. Make sure y'all good. But uh, Brent, so in 2009, so that you created the Hollywood Music and Media Award. So what made you want to create that? My ex-partner, which uh, which I got rid of back in 2015, but um, he came up to me and said, hey, would you produce, you know, or help me produce an award show? I said, what kind? He said, independent music. And I went, oh my God, not <laughs> And at the time I was uh, involved with uh, licensing some music and working with some catalogs. And I said, you know, there, there's a void out there. There is no award show that recognizes specifically the music of visual mediums because that's where people are finding new music. Mm -hmm. Whether it's a song in a film or it's uh, a score of a video game or there's a song in a commercial advertisement, or there's some combination of music and sound in a trailer, all that kind of stuff. That's where people are finding a lot of new music. Mm -hmm. And there is no award show that actually does that, that recognizes score and song in every visual media genre out there. So um, we started it in 2009. We're the first award show um to have uh, categories for outstanding music supervision i knew the importance of music supervisors back then mm -hmm. and there uh, back then it was like 
what what's a music supervisor <laughs> right? i wanted to yes. bring attention to this because they're so important and a great example is nora felder in, um what she did with stranger things this past season mm -hmm. she made kate bush from 1987 a song become a number one world hit mm -hmm. you know running up that hill mm -hmm. and uh that's the work of a music supervisor. They can make an artist become successful simply by placing their music in, in, in the right TV show. So anyway, um, uh, we came up with the categories for that. And it was the first award show that actually recognized video game music equally with television and film music. So all of the video game publishers and gaming companies went, wow. This has never been done before, right? Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of firsts that we did. And, um, and I had independent music artists involved, you know, with genre categories because I wanted to have them involved as well. But uh, over the years, the uh, HMMA um, has been dominated now by the studios, uh, networks, and uh, gaming companies. So the visual categories have expanded and um, um, uh, I can't recognize the independent music artists anymore in a two hour show as they should be. So I knew this day would come. So that's why I created and, and I got all the copyright and URLs and everything I needed to launch the Hollywood Independent, independent Music, music Awards. Awards. Yes. <laughs> and it will be, this, be on the same level of production that the HMMA show is it will be um, it will have the same level of attendance of industry professionals uh, and everything that independent music artists need and should have as far as recognizing the best independent music out there from around the world and uh, um, we are rolling it out right now Obviously, I'm in pre-production for the Hollywood Music and Media Awards, so we're going to start our real hard marketing campaign in December or January for the uh, HIMAs, which will uh, debut in summer of 2023. Nice. Salute, man. Salute to you, Brent, because we need more people like you who care about the independent artists, you know. Uh, a lot yeah. of people just like to fly to the, the big superstars, but hey, you know, the independent artists need love too. So now the Hollywood Independent Music Awards, yeah, we hand out trophies, but it's more than an award show. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very passionate about this. I have a pro team that's that if you go to the website, you'll see my pro team. And these these people are the best of the best in the independent music scene that help music artists have a career, a, some, in many cases, six-figure career, without being signed to a major record label. And that's the trend that's happening right now. Um, a lot of music artists out there are smart enough to know that, well, wait a minute, if I'm getting signed to a major record label, that means I'm in debt to them for the next 10 years, you know? Um, even if they give you a $50,000 check, that, that money needs to be paid back. Exactly. Uh, and, you know, uh, but if you're an independent music artist and have the savvy knowledge and know-how and connections and re relationships on how to market your music and your merchandise and yourself and find these different revenue streams, uh, there are so many out there. So independent music artists can become their own business uh, and, uh, um, and control their own trajectory, you know? So uh, in the HIMA, I, I felt it very important to, to be more than just a music award show. We are a center, we are a hub for music, career education and uh, avenues of uh, becoming successful as a independent music artist. So 
um, you know, we'll, we'll do panels, we'll do, um, you know, symposiums, we'll do all these things that help music artists uh, become successful. And yeah, the words Hollywood and awards are the shiny objects that, <laughs> that, uh, that get all the attention, but mm -hmm. the real value is what's under the hood uh, of the HIMA. So, okay. So, uh, Brent, what would you say has been your greatest challenge in this whole industry for over the years? Staying in it for 50 years. Mm. You know, um, I'm either crazy or I'm doing <laughs> something right. Probably a combination of the two. Mm -hmm. um, so, um, you know, the music and the business has changed so radically uh, from uh, the early days when I was involved, late 70s, 80s, even 90s. Um, and then everything changed with the internet and the uh, um, you know, Tower Records being gone and radio stations not being the place where you find the music and all this stuff. There's, uh, there's a lot of exciting things going on. Uh, the, the Web3 thing, which is in its infancy right now, the NFT thing, which is in its infancy right now. There's a lot of blockchain stuff that's going on. Um, and, and the people that I have in my pro team with the HIM awards, um, they are in that space and uh, they, they will help uh, the music artists understand these new avenues or these new revenue streams. Um, but like I said, they're still in their infancy. So I'm excited to see how that develops and how that grows. Okay. So what would you say has been your greatest accomplishment? greatest accomplishment Get, well I, I i referred to this earlier having the relationships that i have in this business that's my greatest accomplishment are the people that i have relationships with um i'm blessed to be able to pick up my phone or send an email or text somebody that can make a difference in somebody's life. Does that make sense? Of course. Definitely. I mean, of course, definitely. You I know, that's a like, great answer, too. <laughs> you know, like with the Earth, Wind, and Fire guys, I text, you know, Verdine or Ralph or somebody and say, hey, guys, I, I need you to present an award. Can you do it? No problem, Brent. We're there. <laughs> You know, yes. uh, but like last year, they were playing Vegas and doing a show, but they took the time to record a presentation in the green room because we were virtual last year. But they took the time to uh, record a presentation in the green room and, and do it that way. Uh, so, nice. you know, um, they're huge supporters. You know, I, I mean, like David Foster, I can, you know, hey, David, can you do an introduction for Kenny Loggins? Yes, no problem. <laughs> you know, I'm able to do this or I can, uh, I can uh, contact the producer and say, I found somebody that I think has something going on. Can you take a listen and give me your thoughts? And they know that I don't bug them unless it's the real deal, you know? So how you handle your relationships and how you navigate your relationships is very important. Never burn them out. Mm -hmm. Never burn them once because uh -huh. if you burn them once, that's the last time that you'll yeah. ever have a chance. Yeah. That's, so, just like, that's just like me. I'd be like, hey, Brent, I need you to listen to this. No, <laughs> 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 For you, there's no problem. <laughs> But uh, Brett, what um, advice would you give to any artist who really wants to do this music thing, wants to try to make it? I know you've been in the entertainment industry for years. So what advice would you give those artists? It's all about the song. You know, um, write a song or create, create the content 
that you create the content that you want, not the content that you think others want. Mm-hmm. I love that answer. That is a that's exactly what I do on my music. So I love that. If answer. you if you write a song and record a song because you think it's commercial enough for the masses, that's not you. I'm looking for individuals. I'm looking for yous. People that create music that is good and it's unique because it's music that they want and everybody is unique. Everybody is unique. So use that as a weapon. Brent, that is one of the greatest answers I've ever heard. I always tell artists, be yourself. Like we have a lot of the same stuff already out. It's a lot of people that's just like you and they want to hear you from you, <laughs> you know. Don't try to pretend to be the next person because I think the authenticity is what shines through everything, you know. So. Now, now, what uh, what you should do is uh, what Prince did and what Madonna did and uh-huh. some other great acts out there. They took a little bit of this, mm-hmm. a little bit of, this, of course, yes. They took a little bit of this and a little bit of this, and, and they then, made it theirs. Mm-hmm. Yes, <laughs> become you. I did but the it was theirs, but exactly. they borrowed from others. That's yes. that's okay. We all Just do little it. pieces from other things that make what you create will is fine. Yes, but don't try to copy. Exactly, emulate. <laughs> yeah, just take a little bit and go. You know what? That 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 transition from mm-hmm. the, the bridge to the chorus. I love that. Mm-hmm. All right, and then. Use that in your own thing. So I think you get what I'm talking about. Of course. Yes, definitely. Yeah. I do it. I, uh, my favorite rapper is Eminem. So I learned everything I know from him. So, <laughs> And he I, took a little bit of, of everybody. Yes. And and that, a little bit of that. Yes. A little bit of this, a little from Run DMC, and took a little bit of this mm-hmm. from, you know, LL Cooper. Yes. Yeah. And made it his own. And he was so unique. I mean, Slim Shady, my God. Man. This, right? Ha- had you ever heard anything like that before? No. He's amazing. He, yeah. he, is, he is the guy them see. That's the only rapper that stands between me and total supremacy. <laughs> He's so amazing. But, yeah. uh, Brett, how can uh, people, you know, be a part of these great things you got going on, awards and all? Well, um, you can go to the website, the Hollywood Independent Music Awards, and the website's real easy. It's himawards.com. And, of course, the HMMAs is real easy, himmawards.com. But, um, you know, you you can become a member with the HIMA and uh, have uh, total access to all the pro team uh, and, uh, you know, get some free submissions and things like that as a member. But, um, yeah, uh, we're, we're there to help educate and open doors for independent music artists. And there are so many around the world. Uh, with the HMMA, uh, or the HIMA will be like the HMMA. People fly in from all over the world because it's that important. And, um, and, and I'm just blessed to be able to do these things. And it's uh, incumbent upon me to produce a show that's at the level that they deserve to be involved with. Um, so, uh, like I said, I'm deep in pre-production right now. Uh, we're assembling the live performances. There's only four to six four or five live performances for the entire two-hour show. Um, And we're carefully uh, putting those together. Um, And this will be the first time we'll be live since 2019 because of COVID. We had to be virtual for two years. But uh, those two virtual events were more successful than I ever dreamed of. Um, So that was fun. (laughs) But uh, 
the HMMAs are coming up uh, November 16th. So like I said, I got my hands full. Yeah. So my last question that I love to ask all my guests, yeah. when it is all said and done and you are long gone from this earth, what is it that you want the people to know about Brent Hart? that I was a giver and not a taker. That's it. I love it. So, well, Brent, I want to thank you um, for coming to the platform. Thank you for the interview. Uh, I was talking to Beatrice Davis, too. I want to come down there on the red carpet and interview some of these celebrities if you let me come with the media pass and everything. i will i will send you um i will send you the uh, uh press media link uh request okay. form okay uh and our pr department handles uh all of those okay and uh, i'll put a good word in for you okay thank you Brent. i got one more question for you Brent. Okay. one more can you please can i send you about three of my songs and get your honest feedback from me? okay for everybody out there, what Lacey just did is the way to do it. You don't send me MP3s, not just cold, because I will delete those. Just one, two, three. If you if you send me a request, may I send you blah blah blah? Then I will go yes. And that's the way it works with my LinkedIn. Everybody that connects with me on LinkedIn, I send them a little message saying. You know, um, I have a routine. I send a little note, just to make sure you're paying attention that this is a real connection request. And then if you don't reply, I'll just delete you. And then they reply and I go, hello, welcome to the assignment. <laughs> <laughs> so now I know they're not a bot and they're not just doing a mass thing and all that yeah. stuff because yeah relationships again relationships even if they're virtual are so important that they're personal definitely so there you go okay